My name is Ian Matthews. I'm, I'm based in uh, the air shop and, and sellers. Um, and I look after the west coast of Scotland, uh, Glasgow, Ayrshire, uh, around them to get tires. So quite a nice patch selling to the on trade and private customers. Um, but my base is there, and um, the air property, I know some of you have been there already. Um, if you haven't, I just want to describe it to you. It was, it was built by local merchants uh, in 1766. Um, it's got a fantastic cellar complex underneath it. Um, three enormous cellars where we regularly hold tastings that are, are full to, to the brim of fine wines, bonded warehouse where we store wine for our customers. It's an absolutely incredible place to work and, and to be. Um, they, they started off um, 254 years ago, they built a couple of boats, they sailed them from uh, Ayrshire down to Northern Europe, Southern Europe, Portugal, Spain, France, back up into air and, and sold wine uh, to the local community, to the, the country as whatever. We've been doing that uninterrupted for 254 years. We've um, managed to survive war, pestilence, and we're going to survive COVID-19 and we'll be back there as soon as possible. Um, so we've got four Sauvignon Blancs to taste today and I know some of you have bought these wines. So the order we're going to do them in is, um, we're going to start with, uh, number one will be the Lore from, uh, from Gascony, then we're going to do the Sancerre um, from the Loire, then we're going to move on to the two New World wines, Los Camachos from Chile, and then we're going to finish with uh, Anna Sauvignon Blanc from Marlborough. The, the, the reason behind that is we'll start with the kind of lighter flavours and we'll move up and finish with the, with the punchier flavours. So Sauvignon Blanc is a great, it's actually a really good grape to start with in terms of tasting and getting your head around uh, tasting and blind tasting. It's probably the easiest grape uh, to get to grips with. Um, it originates in the Loire, Sancerre, Puy Fumi, but uh, what its spiritual home is, but it's certainly uh, been most successful in a region called Marlborough in New Zealand. 30 years ago, there was no plantings of, of Sauvignon Blanc at all in Marlborough. Um, now, Marlborough accounts for 76% of uh, all the plantings of, of vines in New Zealand and 75% of the plantings in Marlborough are Sauvignon Blanc. So what I, I worked out, 57% of all plantings in New Zealand were Sauvignon Blanc. It's probably now the most important uh, site for Sauvignon Blanc in the world. And I'll talk a bit more about that when we taste the last wine. Tasting wise, I mean, it's quite easy to recognize. It has a broad spectrum of, of flavors, but that are relatively obvious. Um, it's got quite a sort of green edge to it. Um, in, in some cases, grassy, herbal, um, citrus, and then moving into into the new world, it can be pretty punchy. It can be, you know, asparagus. It can be very tropical. It can be intense in your face. It can even be quite sort of sweaty and a bit, you know, not, not uh, ideal on the nose, but hopefully none of these would, would be like that. It does have sort of many, many different flavors to it. Temperature-wise, I took these out of the fridge probably about half past five. I, I tasted them first at four o'clock and, and they were they were fridge cold, they were absolutely freezing. So uh, I've taken them out for, you know, best part of half an hour. What that does is it's just going to bring out a little bit more flavor. I know, I know that, I mean, I like some of them freezing cold, it's great freezing cold, but you, I just wasn't getting as much flavor-wise from these wines when, when they were that cold, so I've, I've allowed them to heat up a little bit. So the first wine, which is lore from, uh, from an area called Gascony, so you're in southwest France. So imagine drawing the line between Toulouse and Bordeaux, and you're south of that towards the Pyrenees. Um, it's remote, uh, it is the middle of nowhere. We did a, a, a lovely trip there a few years ago um, with some customers, um, and we were very well looked after. But to say there was not much to do at night was an understatement. Um, but they do make fantastic wines. Um, it's a producer called Primo. They make a lot of our house wines, uh, our house whites made there, and a number of the sort of entry level wines at the restaurants uh, are, are, are made there. They're a, a source of you know, great grapes, good value. And one of our buyers, um, Rebecca Palmer, spends a lot of time there each year. She will go out and she, she tastes our house wines, she blends our house wines. 
Um, and she would have had the luckless task of, of probably tasting 30 or 40 different barrel samples of this Sauvignon Blanc before deciding which one to bottle for, for us. Um, so I don't know if you've got it, but I, I'll, I'll, I'll give it a sluice right around the glass. Give it a wee smell and we'll have a wee taste. So it's classic, um, refreshing, light, I would say, Sauvignon Blanc. That touch of, of citrus, I'm picking up a little bit, maybe a bit of grapefruit. High acidity, which is very typical of the grape. It's very refreshing, vibrant, a lovely, lovely wine. It's not expensive, it's about nine quid a bottle. Um, and it's a good um, introduction to this wine. In terms, it was made, as I said, it was made for us. And if you've got it, you can see all the, 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 the stuff on the side saying it's exclusive. But as, as, as all these wines are, everything we buy is it's exclusive to the barrel. The label is probably not that easy to see. It's completely white and it's got a, a very, very light, almost like a rising sun. And this lore refers to the kind of sunrise in, in, in Gascony over the fields in the East, which is, which is where it's going. And there's a, a lovely poem on the bottom here um, by a very famous uh, old French poet, which I, I, I can't translate, but I will read out. Um, a blonde light sprinkles nature and an old pink air that looks like it's snowing gold. So, very clever. Um, and a nice, uh, as I say, a nice introduction uh, to uh, Sonia Bonacross. So, we will move on to wine number two which is, um, it's a Sancerre from a producer we've been working with for many years uh, called Domaine du Nozier. It's, in the, it's from the Loire, it's from the central Loire. So if you look at a map of, of France, the central Loire is pretty much bang in the middle of France. The Loire is a long river. They make a lot of wine on it from Muscadet, a, a, a coast all the way along. But this is the kind of probably the most famous area. Um, Sancerre and Puy Fumé or Puy sur Loire are two villages right across from each other that sit in the river, hence the name. And they make brilliant Sauvignon Blancs there. They also make a little bit of Pinot Noir, but they're very, very famous for the Sauvignon Blancs. The family that owned the Nosey are, are called uh, the, the Benoist, Philippe de Benoist, bought the estate in, in 1970. Um, his family was still there. His son Cyril is now the winemaker. So his brother, um, Pierre de Benoist, is a very famous winemaker in Burgundy and works very closely with uh, a chap called Hubert de Boulain, who owns 50% uh, of Comedy Conti. In fact, Hubert de Boulain's sister is married to um, Philippe de Benoist. So it's all these kind of French wine families are quite interlinked. It's quite interesting. Um, the soil, I wasn't going to talk too much about soils, but the soils are interesting here because people talk about minerality in wine, and you definitely get minerality in in Loire Sauvignon Blanc. So this area would have been under the sea millions and millions of years ago. Um, so the soils are, are calcareous calcium limestone made up of, of millions of fossilized uh, seashells, oysters, that sort of thing. Um, and that's why people talk about minerality. Um, can you taste rocks? People think no, but you can definitely pick up Something that I think comes from the, from the soil, a calcium, a saline, a sulfur, something like that. Um, so let's give this a wee smell, a bit more expressive on the nose, a bit more, maybe a bit of lemon. There's a bit of kind of flower blossom in that. It's, it's quite, it's quite the perfume. Again, slightly high acidity which is typical of the grape. Um, much, much longer than the other wine. Um, it's got a creamy sort of texture to it. Very good, very good wine. Um, lovely, very typical Sancerre. 2018 vintage. Um, I would say that was drinking absolutely perfectly now. And we'll talk about food and wine matches a bit later, but the perfect food and wine match for Sancerre is uh, goat's cheese, goat's cheese salad. So we'll move into the new world now. So we are down in Chile, in the Curico Valley, 
which is bang again bang in the middle of Peru, Chile, about 20 odd miles from the coast of the Pacific Ocean. Um, the Chilean uh, wine is often seen as, as a place for good value. It, it appears at the you know pouring wines on, on wine lists. Um, they make a lot of bulk wine. They ship a lot of wine in bulk um, for that purpose, but it's started a renaissance in the last two or three years and one of our intrepid buyers, uh, I think it was Rebecca again, went, went on a trip uh, about a year ago just to really get a bit more to grips with what's going on in Chile and she came back super excited, had met lots of new producers, had met old producers that were making new wines um, and we have brought in a, a load of, of new wines. In fact, we've got, if you go to our website, We've produced this book, um, it's called New Faces of Chile, and it's, it's, it's packed full of the wines we brought in, some really, really interesting stuff, different varietals, ancient varietals um, that people are now working with, old sites, you know, remote sites, so it's, it's definitely worth, worth looking at. So this is Los Camachos, so I'm wrong, and Los Camachos is, um, it's made by a producer we've been working with to make a, a lot of our house wines. But this is a, a single vineyard, so small sites. So that means that every single grape that goes into this comes from the one plot, um, which, which which means there's, there's no blending. So you're getting uh, you're getting you're, get, you're getting an exact um, replica of what is, what is in that, that particular plot um, and that particular vintage. Give it a smell. It is just bursting with a green asparagus. Um, that that is just obvious. It's, it's stepped up a level in terms of of, of, the, of the nose um, from the previous two. That greenness, that real edgy green, high acidity follows through on the palate. Now quite an interesting thing to do if you're learning about wine and you know roughly what the sort of taste spectrums are. So I would say from you know you can go from, from citrus to asparagus to tropical fruit in the Sauvignon Blanc. But we know this tastes of green asparagus so I've got a green asparagus here. So as a wee experiment I'm going to cut that and you can do this later or do this you know later tonight or later today. I just happen to have this in my book in the fridge. You smell that, and you smell that, and that's kind of—it's an you know, extremely attractive training your palate. But that's that's quite an interesting thing to do. Okay, so that's very nice indeed. And then finally, we will go to uh, a wine called Anna Sauvignon Blanc, which I'll just move out because it's hidden there. Which is a wine made in Marlborough, in New Zealand, um, by. Uh, the, the first guy I met when I got into the wine trade, really, a guy called Nikila Radis, his, his family emigrated there in the 80s and they bought a wine estate in Marlborough, which is in, on the north end of the, of the South Island, and uh, a perfect place for growing Sauvignon Blanc because of the, the cooling influences of the, the, the sea and the mountains that are behind them. Um, essentially, what happens the, 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 very good there is that it's warm during the day and uh, you got all these you know fruit tropical flavors and um, ripening in the grapes and it's cold and at night so that think about the grapes going into a fridge and cooling that down and, and keeping in all that singing acidity um, and it's just become um, a perfect place for those sort of as we discussed earlier it's very distinctive in style but it can range again so, so from the green spectrum to the tropical spectrum um, and Nikhil often travels, he's, he's in the UK once, once a year, he's quite a guy. But an interesting story, and a lovely story is my um, my mother and father-in-law were on a cruise about six weeks ago and got marooned in New Zealand. Um, they couldn't travel home, uh, they were in their 70s, we thought it was safer for them to stay out there. And I just happened to message Nikhil to say that they were out there. And he, off his own back, um, sent them a case of a rather Sauvignon Blanc, a, mag a magnum of his best Pinot Noir. So that is a guy he is, he's a lovely, lovely guy. He looked after my house when they were on their own in the middle of nowhere. So he's a guy. There's a brilliant video that he did last night for an international Sauvignon Blanc tomorrow. 
of him and his family and you'll get an idea of what the guy's like Joker. So Anna Somnion Blanc, named after his uh, youngest daughter Anna. Very typical Marlowe Somnion Blanc from the Abertari Valley. Um, green, grassy. It's it's you know it's it's punchy but it's not overtly in your face uh Sauvignon Blanc. It's it's elegant. It's it's a very, very nice drink. And this is the 2018 I'm drinking. I think some of you may have the 2019 and certainly we're, we're moving on to the 2019, which is a, a fantastic vintage in, in Marlborough. Great one, much more expressive in the mouth. Again, really zingy acidity, green fruit, a bit more, a bit of pepper. Again, that that, that sort of gooseberry, bit of citrus, a little bit of tropical. It's just fantastic. Um, so yeah, I think I like all of these wines a lot. Um, obviously, I'm not going to drink four bottles of wine tonight. You never know. Um, we'll see. I think I love Anna, I drink a lot of Anna, I drink it all the time. This was new to me. Today is a lovely wine for just coughing in the back garden, I think. Sunset is very classy. And then Los Camachos, stunning, very punchy for a lovely wine. So, any questions? <laughs>